King of the Road. We got any Hellraisers out there tonight? Well, I'd like to thank both of you. I said, we got any Hellraisers out there? Well, don't say yeah, say hell yeah! Come on, sound off like you got a pair. Hell yeah! I said hell yeah! Don't take this thing down. It's Bobby Ingram. We're talking to Molly Hatchet right here. How you doing, Jim? Good to see you, man. Good to see you too, man. Hey, it's great to be in the area. You know, we love this. I'm a huge fan because, um, well, I graduated from high school in 77 and 78. Your self-titled album came out. Now, listen, Come you're on. going a little bit too far back now, okay? <laughs> we're talking a long time here. No, we're, yeah. this is our 30th anniversary year, you yeah. know, so so there is a lot of history that's involved with the band right now, and, and we're doing the Seth all the way back from the 1978 record that you just talked about, all the way through uh, Wars of the Rainbow Bridge, and a little bit beyond, so we've got a lot of stuff happening. Flirting with Disaster was their second album. First album was uh, Molly Hatchet, self-titled. Platinum first time, double platinum, the, the second album. Then you did a Greatest Hits in '85, yeah. and uh, you actually uh, played with the late uh, Danny Brown. Um, actually, we go back before uh, Molly Hatchet in Jacksonville, Florida, in the mid '70s. I, I guess I'm the one that's credited with giving him his first singing job, you know. Okay. And there's a little story behind that. I had a band called Rum Creek, and and we uh, we were in Jacksonville. I was going to school at the time, getting my my accounting degree, and and. Um, uh, Danny, he was a he was actually an insurance agent, you know. And really? I was rehearsing, and, and he came into rehearsal, and he said, he said, Bobby, he says, I understand you need a lead singer, you know. And I said, Well, yeah, I do. And he said, he said, oh, I'd like to audition. And I said, Well, have you ever sung for a band before? And he says, No, I haven't. And I said, Well, can you be a front man? And and I'll never forget this as long as he said, What's a front man? You know. <laughs> and we hit it off ever since, you know. And and and. Um, uh, that was his first uh, first gig, 1975, and then he went to Molly Hatchet after that, you know, and and it, uh, he, he rocked a lot of people around the world, you know, and, and it gave a lot of good good vibes, you know, from coast to coast and spread the, the word of Southern rock and roll and, and um, you know, his goodness, you know, we all, we all hate to see him gone. So we started recording again and we started touring and we started going from coast to coast and we started seeing all this different um, we, we saw the same group of people southern rock and rollers but from different countries you know like like from Germany and all over you know Scandinavia and, and all the way down to Switzerland and Austria Canada Mexico every, everywhere and we found out that there was a common bond unity a, a, like a kinship and a brotherhood between all these different southern rock and rollers and, and man we just we loved it, you know, because we, we felt embraced, you know, worldwide at that, at that point in time. And it's still going pretty strong for us. That's Bobby Ingram. He's lead guitarist for uh, Molly Hatchet. We're at the Texas Longhorn Club. We took that, that group on the road and um, uh, did an album. And Leonard Skinner actually was going to produce uh, the, the debut album. Ronnie Van Zant was. Ronnie Van Zant before, um, before the tragic yeah. Yeah. tragedy of, with that band. Yeah. And... Um, you know, he gave, he gave a lot of inspiration, and so did the whole band uh, to Molly Hatch and to, 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 you know, the Southern Rock world. And at that time, nobody knew it was going to be called Southern Rock and Roll. Trailers for sale, rents, rooms to let 50 cents. Okay, next. Okay. We're done. I never heard that one. How about this? 